Last time on Porygon Z, we dove into the past of the artificial Pokémon to answer the question of its creation and purpose, only to discover that the culprit would most likely be none other than Team Galactic. Tracing its footsteps back to Silphco and later to Team Rocket scientist Ross, who was possibly also the creator of the dubious disc. Although, while the purpose of Porygon Z's creation would fit Team Galactic's needs, we couldn't explain the weird behaviors it displays. What are these strange glitches, and is it rooted in something we're not supposed to know? Find out in this episode of Noggin! Now, huge props to today's sponsor, Omaze, for not only supporting us here on this channel, but also several kids in hospitals through their support of charities like Make-A-Wish and, right now, Gamers Outreach, who creates medical-grade gaming kiosks for children's hospitals, a topic that is very close to my own heart, as one of my earliest gaming experiences is with a thing like this. Playing Mario 64 in a hospital bed is a foundational memory of mine. First time of actually playing a Nintendo game, actually. And that's just what Omaze does for them. But what does Omaze do for you? Well, when you donate through Omaze, you are entered for a chance to win huge prizes! Luxury cars, international vacations, and right now, they are giving away $20,000 for you to build your perfect PC gaming setup. Treat yourself with top-of-the-line gear and play anything at max settings for years to come! Or use it to jumpstart a video editing career. Seriously, rendering takes so much power. So head to omaze.com slash Loxton to enter for your chance to win $20,000 and build your perfect PC. And support a good cause the whole time. So, what exactly are these strange behaviors that are mentioned in many of Porygon Z's Pokedex entries? Well, considering the entire Porygon line is basically living computer code, there could be a number of explanations. The most basic one essentially being that it can be attributed to bugs, glitches, or simply bad coding. I mean, the dubious disk was most likely an illegally made and rushed software patch. And if we know anything from rushed software, it's that it's typically filled to the brim with bugs. And of course, the Pokémon franchise is no stranger to bugs. I mean, look at all these. Uh, no, I mean software bugs. Gosh dang it, editor. Glitches and bugs. You see so many videos about glitches and bugs in the Gen 1 Pokémon games. Bulbapedia, the fan-made wiki site, has a whole page dedicated to the number of glitches and bugs in just Gen 1 alone. And it's so long! Oh no! Some of these glitches would do things like duplicate items, others were harmful and would corrupt your save file. But let's turn our attention to a particular kind of glitch. When there's an oversight in the programming, the game can handle a collection of miscellaneous data that it's loaded and treat it as if it were a Pokémon species. This produces something known as a glitch Pokémon. How appropriate. And one of the most famous goes by the name of Missing, though. While the older fans in the community are aware of this Pokémon, I'm sure many of you younger and more recent Pokémon fans are asking, what the heck is a Missing No? Well, Missing No is short for Missing Number, and it was classified as a bird normal type Pokémon- wait, bird type? Well, that's right. I talked about it briefly in my Every Flying Type Pokémon Explained video, but basically it was believed that the modern flying type was originally going to be called Bird Type during the development stage before Game Freak realized that birds were not the only things that could fly. Uh, so I guess you could think of Bird Type as a prototype to Flying Type. Huh. Let's put a pin on that and we'll come back to it soon. One notable thing about Missing No is that it appears in different forms depending on the glitch that occurred, and the version of the game. This form, the most well-known form of Missing No, is exclusive to the red and blue versions of the game and appears as a result of the Old Man glitch, in combination with certain slots in the player's name being a specific letter, and the Mew glitch. Then, this form is exclusive to the yellow version and only appears as a result of the Mew glitch, 
This form is unique because unlike in red and blue, this form is listed as normal 999 type. 999 is what is referred to as a glitch type. Huh. Glitch type. These three forms aren't exclusive, meaning they appear in any of the Gen 1 games, but each form can only be obtained as a result of the old man glitch, in combination with certain slots in the player's name being a particular letter for each form. And huh, fossil Pokémon and a ghost. Hmm. Anyways, have you noticed that every form, minus the form that shows up in yellow, mentions the old man glitch? What's that about? The Old Man Glitch is one of the most well-known glitches of the time. Its name comes from the old man you run into in Viridian City at the start of the game, who is needed to start the glitch. You talk to him, listen to his demonstration, and then, once this happens, if the player's name is right, it allows for Missing No to appear at... Cinnabar Island? What? Why? What does it mean? Well. I'll tell you what I think. I think that Missing No could, in fact, be related to Porygon, specifically as a sort of failed prototype. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. So if you couldn't tell from my extremely subtle hints earlier, there are certain things about Missing No that seem coincidental at first glance, but when you put it into the context of Porygon's creation, things start to look a lot less coincidental. Now, Porygon's creation wouldn't have been an exact science. Like with any science project, things have to be tested out and experimented with multiple times to get the desired results. Gamers would understand this as we use terms like alpha builds and beta testing to denote stages of game development. And this typically applies in all sorts of fields and would apply to Porygon's creation as well. So perhaps Missing No came about during the development process. Missing No's bird type could have played a part in Porygon's design as it ended up not being a flying type Pokemon, but its physical appearance does resemble that of a bird. A beak, two legs, and an elongated tail. It's like an origami crane, which is also geometric and man-made. We can also assume that Sylphco had to drop this version of Porygon because there were way too many issues, i.e. glitches, bugs, and or programming errors, but never actually deleted any of these previous versions. Many software developers use older data as a reference to avoid repeating the same process that resulted in the problems they previously encountered. Or even as a fallback if something worse happens later. So they just archived it. In a previous video, we looked at Team Rocket scientist Ross, who worked at Silphco before Team Rocket, and who is an expert in artificial evolution. And while Silphco went on to create the upgrade item to evolve Porygon into Porygon 2, we theorized that by this time Ross had left, and was hired by Team Galactic to create the dubious disc. Link to that video for the details. But if Scientist Ross left Silphco before they finished the upgrade item, or maybe even before finishing Porygon, then when he left, could he have stolen as much stuff as he could have? I mean, he's joining a crime mafia, so why not? So what if, at the time, it's only an early version of Porygon's code? It could come in handy later. So I'll steal it. And then it did come in handy later when making the dubious disc in a rush. Now I'm no programming expert, I only dabbled into it a bit in college, but wouldn't reintroducing old glitchy data into a modern project cause some issues in said product? Explaining the glitchy behavior Porygon Z exhibits? That, plus the fact of Missing No only appearing by Cinnabar Island, the same island where Porygon was created, starts to raise all sorts of eyebrows. And fun fact, Cinnabar Island is associated with many glitches in the games. Not sure what it is about Cinnabar Island, but it's very interesting in this context. But remember, this was a project to create the first artificial Pokémon. Artificial life. So what if... Missing No gained sentience some time after it was shelved, like a bugged out rogue AI. 
But Loxton, you may ask, how would strings of unfinished code come to life? Life, uh, finds a way. In a world where a turtle becomes a tortoise and a remora becomes an octopus, and code already gaining sentience, surely some code gaining sentience is in the realm of possibility. Now, it's not entirely certain how Missing No would find a way to appear in the physical world, though it would probably be along the lines of probably the exact same way Porygon already does it. But because Missing No doesn't have a physical form yet, it can certainly explain why Missing No has its many forms. The jumbles of pixels, a formless alpha Porygon, a formless glitched out hologram. The Kabutops and Aerodactyl fossil forms of Missing No probably come from the data within the Cinnabar Lab, where the player would also resurrect said fossils. Surely, they have scans and photos of those fossils stored on their computers. And the ghost comes from Silphco's data of the Pokemon Tower incident in Lavender Town. Remember, by the time you reach Cinnabar Island in the game, you've already received the Silphscope and solved the mystery of Pokemon Tower. There's also the fact that if you catch Missing No, it has its own page in the Pokédex, although it's blank in the English version, but not in the Japanese version of Pokémon Blue, where it says, Komento Sakuse Chu, which means, comment to be written. Now, is this just Game Freak putting this as a placeholder? Or is that a boring answer? And really, this is actually Missing No trying to communicate with us. How eerie. Though, with all that being said, it is important to point out that Game Freak had already made an official statement a long time ago regarding the existence of Missing No, as the plethora of Missing No related creepypastas were getting out of hand. Missing No is a programming quirk and not a real part of the game. When you get this, your game can perform strangely, and the graphics will often become scrambled. The Missing No Pokémon is often found after you perform the Fight Safari Zone Pokémon trick. Eh, they don't even say glitch, they say trick, because a glitch implies they did something wrong. But... Yeah, that does set things in stone. But when does that ever stop us from having fun with it? If... Missing No were a real part of the game, it wouldn't be too difficult to include it with everything we just talked about. An escaped, messed up Alpha Porygon that was later used to create the dubious disc, which is why Porygon Z has such glitchy behavior. It's kind of perfect. And a lot better than a video I did years ago that theorized that Deoxys is Missing No canonized. Oh gosh, that was 2014. <laughs> That's one of my first videos. Missing No was a game-breaking glitch Pokemon that appeared in the first games. Computer Is that really what I sounded like? Viruses are similar enough. Viruses can cause oh, how the times have changed. Well, it's no wonder that Missing No is filled with fanfiction and theories regarding it throughout the Pokemon fandom. What are some of your favorites? Let me know down below. And until next time, never stop using your no- Thank <laughs> you.